They move millions of people every day, they connect nations, they power economies, and if they stopped running, even for a week, Europe would grind to a halt. These aren't tourist trains or scenic routes. These are the arteries of the continent. The railways so critical, so essential, that modern Europe simply couldn't function without them. And most people have no idea they exist. But in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you the seven railways that literally hold Europe together. The lines that move more freight than highways, that connect more cities than airlines, that have shaped the continent's economy, politics, and future. Before we count down these critical railways, let me explain what makes a railway truly essential. It's not about speed. It's not about luxury. It's about capacity, about reliability, about moving massive volumes of people and goods efficiently day after day, year after year. These are the railways that governments protect, that receive billions in investment, that are considered strategic national infrastructure, because if these railways fail, entire economies suffer. But here's what makes these railways fascinating. They're not all high-speed lines. They're not all modern. Some of them are over 150 years old, still using infrastructure built in the Victorian era. But they work, they're reliable, and they're absolutely critical to how Europe functions today. Without them, the European Union as we know it couldn't exist. The single market would collapse the free movement of people and goods would be impossible. But here's the twist. Most of these critical railways are invisible to tourists. You won't find them in travel guides. They don't appear in Instagram posts. But if you're a logistics manager, an economist, or a government planner, you know these railways, you depend on them, and you worry about what would happen if they ever stopped running. So let's count down the seven most critical railways in Europe starting with number seven and building to the single most important railway line on the continent. Number seven, the West Coast Main Line, United Kingdom. Let's start in Britain, because the West Coast Main Line is one of the busiest mixed traffic railways in Europe. This line runs from London to Glasgow, covering over 400 miles through the heart of England and Scotland. It connects London to Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool and Glasgow. That's five of the UK's 10 largest cities on a single railway line. But the West Coast Main Line isn't just about passengers. It also carries significant freight traffic, including container trains from the Port of Liverpool to distribution centers across England. The line handles over 75 million passengers a year, plus thousands of freight trains. It's electrified, allowing for high speeds and efficient operation. And it's been upgraded multiple times most recently in the early 2000s, to increase capacity and reliability. What makes the West Coast Main Line critical is its role in the UK economy. It connects the financial centre of London to the industrial cities of the Midlands and the North. It moves workers, goods and services along the spine of Britain. And because the UK is an island with limited alternative routes, the West Coast Main Line has no real backup. If it fails, there's no easy detour. Traffic would have to shift to roads or the East Coast Main Line, both of which would be overwhelmed. The line also demonstrates the challenges of maintaining critical infrastructure. Parts of the West Coast Main Line date back to the 1830s and 1840s. The route includes Victorian-era bridges, tunnels and embankments that require constant maintenance. Upgrading the line while keeping it operational is like performing surgery on a patient who can't stop running. But it has to be done because the alternative shutting down the line for major work would be economically catastrophic. Number six, the Rhine-Alpine Corridor, Switzerland, Germany, Italy. Now let's talk about freight because the Rhine-Alpine Corridor is one of the most important freight railways in Europe and most people have never heard of it. This corridor runs from the North Sea ports of Rotterdam and Antwerp through Germany and Switzerland to the Italian ports of Genoa and Milan. It's over 1,000 miles long and it carries an enormous volume of container traffic. The Rhine-Alpine Corridor is critical because it connects Northern Europe's major ports to Southern Europe's industrial centers. Goods arriving by ship in Rotterdam are loaded onto trains and sent south through Germany. They pass through the Gotthard Base Tunnel, the world's longest railway tunnel, under the Swiss Alps and they arrive in Italy, where they're distributed across Southern Europe 
and the Mediterranean. This corridor moves over 200 million tons of freight annually, that's more than most highways, and it does it efficiently, with electric locomotives pulling trains over a mile long through some of the most challenging terrain in Europe. The Gotthard Base Tunnel alone, which opened in 2016, was a $12 billion investment designed specifically to increase the capacity of this corridor. What makes the Rhine-Alpine Corridor strategically critical is its role in European integration. It makes the single market work. It allows goods to move from Northern Europe to Southern Europe without being held up at borders or transferred between different transport modes. And it reduces truck traffic on Alpine highways, which are already congested and environmentally damaging. The corridor also demonstrates the importance of international cooperation. The railway crosses multiple countries, each with different operators, different regulations, and different priorities. Making it work requires constant coordination between national governments, railway companies, and the European Union. It's a logistical and political achievement as much as an engineering one. Number 5. The Paris-Lyon High Speed Line, France the Paris-Lyon line opened in 1981, was the first true high-speed railway in Europe, and it's still one of the most critical. This line connects France's two largest cities, carrying over 25 million passengers a year, at speeds up to 200 miles per hour. But its importance goes beyond just moving people between Paris and Lyon. The Paris-Lyon line is the backbone of France's TGV network. It's the trunk line from which other high-speed routes branch. Trains heading to Marseille, to the French Riviera, to Switzerland, to Spain, all use the Paris-Lyon line for at least part of their journey. It's the busiest high-speed railway in Europe, with trains departing every few minutes during peak hours. What makes this line critical is its economic impact. It transformed Lyon from a regional city into a major business center by putting it within two hours of Paris. It made it possible for people to live in Lyon and work in Paris or vice versa. And it proved that high-speed rail could compete with airlines and cars, leading to the expansion of high-speed networks across Europe. The Paris-Lyon line also demonstrates the importance of capacity. When it opened, it could handle about 200 trains a day. Today, it handles over 300 and it's approaching its maximum capacity. France is now planning additional high-speed lines to relieve pressure on the Paris-Lyon corridor, because if this line becomes saturated, it creates bottlenecks across the entire French railway network. Number 4. The Brenner Railway Austria and Italy The Brenner Railway, connecting Innsbruck in Austria to Verona in Italy, is one of the most important trans-alpine routes. It's been in operation since 1867, making it one of the oldest mountain railways still in heavy use. And it's absolutely critical to European freight transport. The Brenner Pass is the lowest major pass through the Alps, at just over 4,500 feet. This makes it the easiest route for trains to cross between northern and southern Europe. And the Brenner Railway takes full advantage of this, carrying enormous volumes of freight traffic, over 40 million tons of goods cross the Brenner annually, much of it by rail. But the current railway is reaching its limits. The route includes steep grades and tight curves that limit train length and speed. So Austria and Italy are building the Brenner Base Tunnel, a 40-mile tunnel that will run under the Alps at a much lower elevation. When it opens, expected in 2032, it will dramatically increase the capacity of this critical corridor. What makes the Brenner Railway strategically important is its role in connecting Germany to Italy. Germany is Europe's largest economy, Italy is the third largest, and the Brenner is the main railway link between them. Goods manufactured in Germany are shipped to Italy, Italian products are sent north to German markets, and all of it moves through the Brenner. The railway also demonstrates the environmental benefits of rail freight. The Brenner Pass Highway is one of the most congested in Europe, with thousands of trucks crossing daily. Each freight train that uses the Brenner Railway removes dozens of trucks from the highway, reducing emissions and congestion. 
It's a key part of Europe's strategy to shift freight from road to rail. If you're enjoying this breakdown of Europe's most critical railways, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button right now. We've got more deep dives into the infrastructure that shapes our world coming your way. And trust me, the next three railways on this list, they're even more critical than what we've covered so far. Number three, the Channel Tunnel Rail Link, UK and France. The Channel Tunnel, or Channel, is one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects ever completed, and the railways that connect to it are absolutely critical to European integration. The tunnel itself, opened in 1994, runs 31 miles under the English Channel, connecting Folkestone in England to Calais in France. But the real importance lies in the high-speed rail links on both sides. On the French side, the LGV Nord connects the tunnel to Paris and to the European high-speed network. On the British side, High Speed One connects the tunnel to London. Together, these railways make it possible to travel from London to Paris in just over two hours, or London to Brussels in under two hours. That's faster than flying when you account for airport time. But the Channel Tunnel isn't just about passengers. It also carries enormous volumes of freight. Euro Tunnel operates shuttle trains that carry trucks through the tunnel, moving goods between the UK and continental Europe. Over 1.6 million trucks use the tunnel annually, making it a critical link in European supply chains. What makes the Channel Tunnel Rail Link strategically critical is its role in connecting the UK to Europe. Britain is an island and before the tunnel, all trade with Europe had to go by sea or air. The tunnel provides a fast, reliable, all-weather alternative. And it's become even more important since Brexit as the UK and EU work to maintain trade flows despite new customs procedures. The tunnel also demonstrates the importance of resilience. In 2015, a fire in the tunnel forced its closure for several days. The economic impact was immediate, with supply chains disrupted and passenger services cancelled. It showed how dependent modern Europe has become on this single piece of infrastructure and it led to increased investment in safety and backup systems. Number two, the Cologne-Frankfurt high-speed line, Germany. Germany's Cologne-Frankfurt high-speed line might not be as famous as France's TGV routes, but it's arguably more critical. This line opened in 2002, connects two of Germany's most important cities and serves as a key link in the European high-speed network. But its importance goes far beyond just connecting Cologne and Frankfurt. This line is part of the Rhein-Ruhr Corridor, the most densely populated and economically productive region in Germany. It connects the industrial cities of the Ruhr Valley to Frankfurt, Germany's financial center, and it serves as a critical link for trains traveling between Northern and Southern Europe. Trains from Amsterdam to Munich use this line, Trains from Paris to Berlin use this line. It's a hub in the European network. The Cologne-Frankfurt line carries over 300 trains a day, including high-speed ice services, regional trains, and freight. It's one of the busiest railways in Europe, and it's operating near capacity. Germany is now planning additional tracks and upgrades to increase capacity, because the demand continues to grow. What makes this line strategically critical is its role in the German economy. Germany is Europe's largest economy, and the Rhine-Ruhr region is its economic heart. The Cologne-Frankfurt line connects this region to the rest of Germany and to Europe. It moves workers, business travelers, and goods, and it does it efficiently, reliably, and at high speed. The line also demonstrates the challenges of building high-speed rail in densely populated areas. Unlike France, which could build TGV lines through relatively empty countryside, Germany had to build through urban areas, industrial zones, and environmentally sensitive regions. The Cologne-Frankfurt line required extensive tunneling, noise barriers, and environmental mitigation. It was expensive and controversial, but it was necessary. Number 1. The North-South Freight Corridor Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, Italy the most critical railway in Europe isn't a passenger line, it's a freight corridor. The North-South Freight Corridor, also known as Corridor Rhine-Alpine, runs from the North Sea ports of Rotterdam and Antwerp 
through Germany and Switzerland to the Italian ports of Genoa and Milan, and it's the backbone of European trade. This corridor moves over 200 million tons of freight annually, that's more than any other railway in Europe. It carries container trains from Asian ships arriving in Rotterdam to distribution centers across Europe. It moves German manufactured goods to Italian markets. It transports Swiss precision machinery to Northern European customers. And it does all of this efficiently, electrically, and with minimal environmental impact compared to road transport. What makes this corridor the most critical railway in Europe is simple. If it stops, European trade stops. The single market depends on the free movement of goods, and the North-South Freight Corridor is how most of those goods move. It's the physical infrastructure that makes European economic integration possible. The corridor includes some of the most impressive railway engineering in the world. The Gotthard Base Tunnel at 35 miles is the longest railway tunnel ever built. The Luchberg Base Tunnel at 21 miles is the third longest. These tunnels allow freight trains to cross the Alps at high speed and with minimal environmental impact. They're billion-dollar investments in the future of European trade. But the corridor also faces challenges. Capacity is limited. The railway crosses multiple countries, each with different operators and regulations. And there's constant pressure to increase capacity while maintaining safety and reliability. The European Union has designated this corridor as a priority project, investing billions in upgrades and expansions. The North-South Freight Corridor also demonstrates the environmental benefits of rail freight. A single freight train can carry as much cargo as 50 trucks, it produces a fraction of the emissions, and it reduces congestion on highways. As Europe works to meet its climate goals, shifting freight from road to rail is essential, and this corridor is leading the way. So there you have it, the seven most critical railways in Europe. From the West Coast Main Line connecting Britain's major cities to the North-South Freight Corridor, moving goods across the continent, these railways are the infrastructure that makes modern Europe possible. They're not glamorous, they're not famous, but they're absolutely essential. These railways demonstrate that infrastructure matters, that the decisions made about where to build railways how to maintain them and how to expand them have enormous economic and political consequences and that Europe's integration, its prosperity and its future depend on keeping these critical railways running. Which of these critical railways surprised you the most? Did you know about the North-South Freight Corridor? Had you heard of the Rhine-Alpine route? Or did you think high-speed passenger trains were the most important railways in Europe? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this breakdown of Europe's critical infrastructure valuable, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We've got more deep dives into the systems that shape our world coming your way. Until next time, remember that the most important infrastructure is often the infrastructure you never notice until it stops working.